Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Time Excellence Show, uh, where we maximize your time to make a difference. I am Douglas Calvin, and you can find me at DouglasCalvin.com. Today, we have a great uh, practical lesson out of our home series, Trip to the Dentist. Now, that's episode uh, three in our home series. And it doesn't sound uh, exciting, you know, who likes to go to the dentist? But I think it's going to have some practical examples on how to look at the whole subject of time excellence. So uh, join us as we go through here. Welcome and let's get going. Well, first off is the situation. This is, this is uh, not an unusual event where we have to have an appointment. And as we have appointments, uh, we go to them, we, we, we struggle through them and, you know, don't even really probably think about it much other than the, the dread of maybe going. Uh, I recently went to the dentist and found that, you know, time excellence opportunities can be found in what I'll call the small things. And this is a, a, a simple example of how to look at time and how we might be able to maximize our time for what matters most. So last week I had a, a dental appointment and I literally, uh, before I went, said, you know, let's just kind of keep a record of what goes on and we'll use it as an example. It might be a good example it might not be a good example. Uh, I didn't know. So uh, what you're going to see is the result of just a random sampling of a trip to the dentist. But I think within it and how we approach it is something that might be useful to you as you look forward to uh, improving your time excellence. So first off, what happened? What are the times? Well, the entire time from my office and to the dentist and back was 70 minutes. Well, relatively speaking, that's not a lot of time. So you might say, uh, well, that's not too bad. Uh, you know, it happened. Let's get on with life and get down the road. Uh, it might not be too bad. 70 minutes. It's, you know, we've all had appointments longer than that. But the question we have today is, well, is the 70 minutes good or bad or not too bad? How well did I do? And more importantly, is there room for improvement that we can apply some, uh, some common sense principles to make a better outcome? So let's look at this example of time from a time excellence viewpoint, and let's see if we can come to some conclusions. All right, so this is the summary of what happened. I left the office uh, at, quote, time zero and arrived at the dentist uh, in 10 minutes later. So these are all minutes over on, uh, on this chart. So 10 minutes I arrived. Now, that implies it's pretty close, and it is. It's just outside, uh, you know, probably a mile away or less in... Um, no real traffic, so got there. The appointment time, uh, it took. once I arrived, I waited five minutes until I got to the appointment time. So I arrived five minutes early for the appointment, signed in and sat down. After the appointment time came, it took 15 minutes to when I was called in. And after that, I was called in and a technician, I don't know what the official title is, but uh, not the dentist, and a technician, uh, did did some uh, pre-work and took about 10 minutes and she was finished. Well, we then waited to see the dentist for another 10 minutes. And when he came in, it took him about 10 minutes. It could have been seven, could have been eight, could have been 10. I'm on the little, probably on the high side. He just had to do a quick check of the work that the tech had done uh, and, and finished. Well, then I left and arrived back at work. So you can see when we add these up, it, it, it's that hour and 10 minutes, 70 minutes of total time it took. 
So let's, uh, let's go a little bit deeper in this. Let's see what that might mean. The categorization of time is often something that's, that's valuable. It, we can take the times that things happen and we can break them into similar, uh, similar categories and simplify the view and maybe find opportunities that way. So let's go ahead and categorize these. Uh, together. Um, so first off, I left the office and arrived at the dentist. Well, I put that under travel. That's travel time. Got in the car, went to, went there, uh, walked up the steps, traveling, and arrived. Uh, the appointment time wait, I put under wait. So I got there a little early. Remember that five minutes early, and then we waited. Then I waited in the waiting room 15 minutes and that we put under wait also. The tech then did some work for 10 minutes. Now I categorize that as value add and that, that may be not the way we would normally term it, but think of it this way. I was paying them to do some dental work and that was part of that which I paid, something that, that's valuable to me. Uh, had, I, had they not done anything, I'd had no value. So that was time spent on the value add part, what they do for a living, what they do to help me. Uh, well, we then waited for 10 minutes, so I put that under wait. And then the dentist came in and did his work, and that took another 10 minutes. So value add for that one, as well as the 10 minutes where the tech was working value add. And then finally, I came back home and traveled for another 10 minutes. So you can see I have three categories that ended up. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, how many categories we should have, but in this case, we ended up with travel time, we ended up with wait time, and we ended up with value add time. I'll, I'll just call that VA, VA time, value add, where, where the work was being done that they are experts of. So out of the 70 minutes, we've now got them categorized. So if I were to total those up, this is what it starts looking like. There was 20 minutes of travel, there was 30 minutes of wait time, and there was 20 minutes of value add time. Or Summing again, it should be the same 70 minutes. So we've taken a simpler view. We've simplified the look and made it much easier to see. And the categories uh, start, start talking to us. Well, 28.6% is value add. Now, how did I get that? Well, I took 20 minutes of dental work 20 divided by 70, uh, that equals two sevenths, whoops, two sevenths. And if I get a calculator out, that's uh, about 0.28 or 28%. So you can see the less than a third of my time was dental work and the rest was travel and waiting. So those are not things that really get me where I want to in life. Uh, those, are, those are the things that, uh, those are things that don't hit my big goals. I had to do them. They were there. But you know, if I could minimize those, I wouldn't uh, feel sad whatsoever. I would actually gain that time back. So we're going to look at that possibility on how might we approach those. And a visual on it shows us somewhat the same thing. It shows us that if we really look at the chart, the green area is the value add. And see, it's just a, it's this pie in this small part. And then the 20 minutes of the travel and the 30 minutes of, of excuse me, yeah, 20 minutes of travel and 30 minutes of waiting really shows that if we could reduce those, we'd still get the same dental work done and, and not at all hurt our situation as far as uh, outcomes go.
So what improvements might we consider? What, what can we look at? Well, in, in my situation, uh, yours could be different, but we're just teaching on a methodology here. How might we look at the travel piece? Well, you know, I might reduce the travel time by being closer to the dentist. That's a great possibility many times, but the reality is this one's pretty close. You notice it's less than 10 minutes to do getting in the car, going and getting out of the car. It is, it is not that far. So really moving uh, offices or, or homes closer to the dentist won't help us. Avoiding traffic time. Sometimes when we travel, there's traffic time in there. But in this case, the facts bear that there was no traffic. This is a not a high traffic route. So traffic times is not going to reduce those 20 minutes of travel time at all. One of the techniques that we might want to consider, though, is combining with other trips. For instance, what we did this time is when I went to the dentist, I traveled to the dentist for 10 minutes, and then I came back home for another 10 minutes, giving me a total of 20 minutes. It's possible to take that dental trip and add it to other things. So let's, let's think about adding some others. Uh, there's a, a, a grocery store not too far away. There's a couple of uh, home improvements. The, the... So if I could combine trips, then I could possibly reduce that time. So I could go to the dentist, then travel a very short distance for my second stop at the grocery store, then run to the home improvement center and then come back and the time for that would approximately be 10 minutes to get to the dentist, five minutes to the grocery, five minutes to the home improvement and then 10 minutes back to the office or home. So let's total those up. That's 10 plus 10 is 20 plus two fives is 30 minutes. Now if I did these errands all together, that would have been a 20 minute trip round trip times three equals 60 minutes. So I've dropped the amount of travel time because I've combined it. And I know you've done that in the past, but sometimes we don't remember to do it uh, every time we can. And if I did go to three places for 30 minutes, that would give me a 10 minute average so that would reduce it, the 20 down to 10. So there's one way to look at, in this situation, improving my travel time in the future. All right, the other component that we remember we saw was the waiting time. And those consisted of a five minute wait because to be honest, I got there a little early. There was additionally a 15 minute wait when I sat in the waiting room waiting to be called in. So it's a 15 minute that was uh, fairly significant, a five minute wait on the beginning. And then once I got inside, I waited for the dentist for 10 minutes. And so a lot of opportunity in there. So what, what might we do to minimize that time? Well, I've thrown a couple ideas out here. Uh, let's see how they work. Well, don't arrive too early. I mentioned it's a short trip and there's not much traffic. So realistically, that five minute wait until I hit the appointment time, that could easily be taken down to probably less than a minute. We can time that one very accurately. I know exactly where it is. I go uh, uh, there and traffic is is in general, not an issue on that route. So uh, that would, could be reduced time. So, you know, we'll get a little bit of savings there. So if we take five minutes down to zero, well, that gets us a little bit of savings. Schedule at the optimum time. Now there's an interesting one. 
there was a backup inside and it took a while to call me. So one of the possibilities is find a time that this dentist can see me more quickly. Now this particular trip happens to be at a time that was not my normal time. I usually go in first thing and my weight is almost non-existent because they're filling, they're filling the queues. They're just getting started. And these dentists are on time. I had a doctor once, you could get there for the first appointment and you would still wait half hour to an hour until he showed up. So in this case, uh, we might say, you know, if I hit the, the, the days and times that are optimum, and in this case, it's usually Monday through Thursday at the first appointments. So you have to plan ahead and you may have to talk to the receptionist and say, you know, when, when are you most busy? When are you not busy? When, when can you get in? And, the, and they'll be happy to tell you uh, to help, help you on that scheduling. So if we take that 15 minutes down to five, that would be a savings. And waiting to see the dentist once you get in, well, I don't know that what I can do about that. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that 10 minutes and just say, we're stuck with that. So we end up with a 15 minute overall new plan if we make some changes versus our 30 minutes of waiting on the original plan. So, you know, it's a way to save 15 minutes. And that can be quite significant. All right, what results did we just see? Well, we saw a 50% improvement on the travel because we combined three trips and dropped the average time on this trip down to 10. Now it did take us more time to make those trips, but overall, as we said, we've reduced time and we, we eliminated three trips. So if that's a possibility, uh, we saved theoretically 10 minutes in, in that move. And then recapping the wait times for removing early, we took the, the 15 minutes away from our 30 and ended up with 15. So another 50% reduction. So these are not huge numbers, but let's add them up. We now have saved 10 minutes and 15 minutes, and we've saved 25 minutes savings on something that we didn't have to work any harder. We didn't have to do anything different. We just will squeeze out 25 minutes. And remember, we only had 70 minutes tied up in our, in our schedule anyway. So to take 25 minutes out is not insignificant in my mind. It's something that says, well, you know, that's, that's free. So we should really look at it. So here's the overall summary that we just talked about that the total new time is 45 minutes um, of, of the travel of 10 minutes, waiting of 15 minutes, and dental work is 20. So we're at 45 minutes, saving 25 minutes, and the charts change. Look, look at the difference in the charts. You see how the green area is a smaller proportion on this left pie chart. If you're if you're listening uh, by audio only, uh, it's it shows about one third is in the 20. But the when after the, the 20 minutes of value add is a much bigger proportion, which is good when we get to the 45 minutes. So we have reduced the things we wanted to reduce, which is travel and waiting. It would be great if we could get that to zero. That would be fantastic. And there is a way to do that. If you've got enough money, you could have the dentist come to your office or to your appointment if they had the equipment. They would come in, do their work and leave. There's no waiting, there's no travel. That would be perfect. You got 20 minutes of value add and they can do their work right then and be gone. Well, the waste went on their ticket uh, for that. So a 36% savings overall, that's the summary. That's, that's what we got with this. And that's a, a, a pretty good, pretty good result for this. So what does this mean? 
Well, we took a common example and we're able to take 36% of the time out by just scheduling changes, uh, planning a little bit, maybe combining trips. Those reduces the no total number of, of, of tasks between them. And we're able to say that, you know, we have used our time the best way that we could given our circumstances. Your circumstances will be different, but I hope that this helps you kind of see how can I look at my things and find easy stuff? If we did one of these a day uh, and rounded up to half an hour, if we could save half an hour a day and there's five days just in the work week, uh, you know, there's what, two and a half hours of time freed up. Who wouldn't want to use two and a half hours a week? What would you do with it? Those of you that have no personal time left, those of you that, that, that can't get a, a project done, this is a small example and are usually bigger uh, opportunities, but this is a great one to show how we might look at, at things and how we might benefit from uh, those improvements. All right, it's been fun. I hope you learned something. You can visit us at douglascalvin.com and find us and really uh, see what other tips and concepts we have to offer. Uh, there's free training webinar registration available at douglascalvin.com forward slash webinar. Uh, there's free training content at douglascalvin.com slash go slash free things with no space between. Uh, and if you want to join and help us, help us on Facebook, Twitter, help us on YouTube. Uh, you can comment, you can share, you can retweet, you can friend us, you can thumbs up us. Any of that activity helps us to get the word out. Now that sounds like it's not important, but it really is because the social media looks at these activities and, and spreads the word. So if you got good information out of this video, help someone else see it, put them in, put it in their news feed, put it in their email box. That's, that's how you can do it. There's also affiliate partner information that you can look at and that helps fund uh, this free content. So I, 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 I hope that you really got something out of this and I hope that it's something that really, really benefits you and learns, uh, uh, teaches us how to think in time excellence terms, teaches us how we can maximize our time to make a difference. So I'm Douglas Calvin with douglascalvin.com. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Thanks again.